Welcome back. As we earlier said, uh, we're going, of course, to talk about uh, uh, the beautiful uh, Bayram, Lesser Bayram, or Eid al Fitr. Of course, we're uh, witnessing the second day of Eid al Fitr al Mubarak, and uh, of course, all Egyptians are rejoicing together, uh, trying to enjoy their time, to uh, have the same, enjoy the same festivities that we have been enjoying uh, since uh, many years when it comes to Lesser Bayram and celebrate. Al-Iftar, uh, people uh, uh, stop fasting uh, together and enjoy the gatherings and everything, but gatherings within the limits, within the precautions, and within uh, uh, everything that could be, that could not harm uh, or impose any uh, danger uh, to our lives. Of course, taking the utmost precautionary measures because of the COVID. Today we're going to be talking about the most important destinations and the beautiful places to choose to go to during gate, taking the precautionary measures. And of course, we have uh, a beautiful uh, guest with us here, uh, our uh, prominent guest, uh, Ms. Yomna Salema, and she is a tourism expert. She's going to give us her intake of the most beautiful places to visit in Egypt. Good morning, Yomna, and uh, happy Eid to you. Good morning and happy feast to everyone. Uh, same here. And t tell me, Yomna, of course, as we all know, that uh, the whole uh, world is uh, undergoing the pandemic and we're taking our precautionary measures. But of course, we need to, I mean, uh, put the stress aside and take it on our ease a little bit and enjoy our times. We can do that. With, it's almost three years now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. So what is the best program uh, for Eid al-Fitr? that co could coincide or um, co uh, compromise with the COVID-19 or COVID in general? Well, at the beginning, I would like to uh, shed light on something uh, very important, mm. that Egypt is blessed with different destinations that people can <laughs> enjoy <coughs> during the feast and uh, during any other occasions as well. Mm. So uh, we have, of course, one of the most popular destinations for uh, the feast, uh, for domestic tourism, the North Coast, and also the Red Sea. Mm. So lots of Egyptians uh, like to travel to the North Coast during the uh, feast and also during other occasions, and the Red Sea with all its uh, beauty and the different cities. Those are very popular destinations for domestic uh, tourism. Mm. The most popular destinations outside Egypt, and of course it's open areas and healthy and uh, too many elements that could help us to enjoy our time uh, with safety measures. Of course, it's very good to be in the fresh air and to stay away from uh, closed areas. Uh, so it's uh, recommended to uh, have our uh, vacation mostly in outdoors areas. That's why today you find uh, many of the hotels are actually moving their uh, restaurants to an outdoor area so people, the guests can stay outside as uh, long as possible, which is very important. And also on the beaches and on the pool, they try to keep the distance between uh, the guests, which is also very important. Mm. Uh, what do you think are the main features uh, of Eid al-Fitr with the COVID? How do you expect it? It's, I mean, we're going through all uh, situations, you know, we could have an experience to remember later on in 10 years. Uh, definitely, we will have an experience. It's not the best experience, mm. but we learned out of this of experience uh, many, many things. And the first lesson that we learned that actually uh, taking care of our health <coughs> and following the uh, precautions uh, is something important with a virus or without a virus. So people should really, the, the social distance culture and also uh, trying to strengthen your immunity system by different means, uh, having healthy, um, um, healthy diet. All this is important for our life in general. So this is one of the uh, lessons that we learned. And today I can see that the people are trying to adapt with this uh, uh, virus, with this pandemic. And you are wearing your gloves. We were wearing masks here in the studio. So people are using the sanitizers, washing their hands often, which is actually very bad, a very good habits mm. that we should continue on. And uh, of course, when we, when we look to the future and back to your question, uh, I think the world uh, learned that we are all tied with one uh, 
thread maybe we are like pearls in one thread so we are not really far from each other one thing that could happen at the end of the world can affect the other end so mm. this is also a very important uh, we're all connected we're all connected we're all in like pearls in one thread so we are really uh, living on this planet as one nation and this is very important this is the lesson we learned so you don't say here I'm in Egypt we should respect the, the rights of each other and the rights of other creatures also. Exactly. The environment, the animals, the species, and uh, uh, the climate, and everything. Otherwise, there are going to be... Uh, We're going to be a, all a affected. Feedback. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. And this is the best, um, the most important lesson that we have learned from COVID. Yes. That we have to respect nature in order to receive her respect. Yes, indeed. Um, talk to us, how can we promote domestic tourism? The talk most of the days now are about is about the domestic tourism all the time domestic tourism is also important you are very right and uh, this is very important actually because i always say uh, we are over 100 million egyptians so if only 50 percent or 25 percent even of this uh, amount of population uh, doing domestic tourism mm. it will have a great impact on our economy and also on the uh, tourism sector so uh, the Egyptians, and let's say uh, when we had all the, um, the difficult times from 2011 till uh, 2017, and there were no stability, at that time we had no international tourism. But the Egyptians were the ones actually who started to push the cycle of the economy forward and started to travel to destinations like Luxor and Aswan, like Siwa. Today we have very popular places like mm. Siwa became a very popular place for Egyptians even. So mm. domestic tourism is very important. And the Egyptians learned during that time that they can enjoy also their country because the culture before uh, the crisis we had uh, was not that popular to travel. M most Egyptians will go to the beaches. But now they are traveling to other destinations like the oasis, like Siwa, like uh, St. Catherine, like <coughs> doing also um, safari in the deserts. All this became a bit by bit popular and indeed the travel agencies need to uh, tailor made programs for the Egyptian culture and the Egyptian mentality. Mm -hmm. Because you cannot sell the same program you are selling to uh, international tourists to Egyptians. Mm -hmm. You have to uh, tailor made the program to match the requests and the culture of our clients. So here our client will be Egyptians and uh, really tourism, uh, uh, tourist agencies and companies need to work on that. Some of them are already doing a great job uh, putting in our mind also the budget. Because when you are receiving international tourism, the budget is normally higher. Now we are talking to Egyptians. They have some people, majority of people, they have actually limited budget. So to encourage them to travel, the tourism companies need to make this kind of budget tours mm. for them. And uh, the, the, the tours that they make for the Egyptians also need to meet their cultures and their needs and their expectations. And this is very important. And we need to work on that a little bit more uh, also to encourage the younger ones. Yeah. The younger ones need to travel and explore and discover their country. I'm talking about, uh, like we were talking earlier about our kids, like 16, 17 years old. They need to travel. In Europe, at that age, uh, 17, 18 years old uh, will travel all around <laughs> Europe. So we need this age here in Egypt to travel also all around Egypt maybe to put some kind of adventure trips, backpackers trips for the young ones. And this is very important. Of course, you touched on a very important element, which is promoting and custom making the uh, touristic packages for each uh, tourist. And we can count uh, Egyptians as a type of tourist. Definitely. There is the Japanese tourism, the Chinese, the Gulf, the European, the American. Talk to us about how do you, as, as experts, you tailor or you custom make uh, the package for each tourist. I mean, uh, out of experience, you might now figure out uh, that the Gulf uh, tour, um, tourist would like this to visit this place, would like this type of food, would like this type of program and everything. 
give us examples. How do you custom make? How so, do you promote? Uh, first of all, the uh, travel agencies, they have different files and each file has its own uh, <coughs> characteristics. So when you have an adventure file, regardless the nationality, American, Japanese, uh, European, this file, the characteristic is adventure. So we did and we tell program. Uh, adventure program meaning putting safari, sleeping outdoor, sleeping in a tent, also sleeping on a felucca. We have mm -hmm. programs that the guest will spend a night or two on board of a Nile felucca, a sailboat. Uh, a sailboat. So this is like the adventure type. Now we have other types like the classical type. The classical type is normally for seniors and uh, this kind of guest and client is not willing actually to, um, to move a lot and do lots of activities. So they just want to do the classic program to see the main highlights and the sightseeing, go back to a nice hotel, uh, mm. all, all this. We have also other types. Um, we have the uh, religious programs. There are many tourists coming to Egypt because of the religious importance of Egypt either uh, Jews, Christians, or even Muslims from the Far East. Mm. So when we have religious tours, we need to put in mind that more uh, religious places and sites will be visited. For example, if I am comparing a classical uh, program with a religious one, the classical program maybe will include one church, one mosque, and one Jewish synagogue. But if you are doing a religious program, mm. you are at least visiting more than five or six mosques because it's in this direction. Uh, we have also another type that was very <coughs> popular in the past uh, years. We have the uh, luxury tourism, and this is also very important. The guests are trying to experience Egypt from a luxurious uh, aspect. Mm. So you're doing everything on a luxurious uh, uh, level. You take them to special places, like you take them to a, a dinner in the uh, in the Giza plateau with nobody else except those guests. You take them on a, a dahabiyah uh, in the River Nile, so it's just limited number, six cabins. So you imagine the number of guests is very that limited. So nice. Uh, yeah. So uh, like traveling like a prince or a, a king. So those are the luxurious trips. Of course, they like to visit all the um, top uh, restaurants stay in the best five stars <coughs> hotels. So it's very important. Th this is how we tailor made. We see the requirements of the guests, the type of the file and the nature of this program and the guests choose from it. Mm. And of course there are certain or uh, um, a specific uh, tourist for every program. Like for example, the European, they wouldn't like the luxury. Uh, just as an example in in or general in general yes but it it goes back to your personal uh, uh, needs and mm. your personal wishes mm. so there are some Europeans who uh, enjoy <coughs> the safari for example like uh, like uh, Swiss travelers they like to do the safari and so on uh, most Europeans are highly interested in the uh, classical type as well because of the ancient Egyptian history Mm. And of course we have um, others who like from East Europe, for example, like we have also that uh, type of tourist at the moment in very good numbers. They like to do the beaches holidays. So they go mm. to the beaches in the Red Sea and they even come to, to Cairo for the pyramids and the museum one or two days or one day quick trip. So the mentality of the East Europeans uh, Russians as well are coming. They like to enjoy the beach, the Red Sea. Uh, they, they would not do the uh, religious tourism, for example. They would not do, I'm talking also about the majority, but not everyone, because you can find exceptions in every... Uh, of course, yes. there are exceptions. But also, uh, talking about uh, Egyptians. Yes, you, uh, back to us. <laughs> precious, valuable clients. Uh, nowadays, <laughs> yes, you should thank them because <laughs> you're going to remember that they stood by your side. Uh, I stood uh, by the side of Egypt, our country. I'm Egyptian, you're Egyptian, course. so we are all together um, in this. Um, I'm talking about the tourism tourism industry. Sec, yes. Uh, uh, what type of programs have you invented or updated uh, during COVID for Egyptians? I, you know that the Egyptians come with their own culture yes. as well. Yes. We're talking, uh, classifying them as, as clients now, so they come with their own uh, culture. What type of programs do they love or uh, do they prefer? 
Well, the Egyptians also are <laughs> more into the um, um, uh, entertaining tourism. And when you put some culture tourism in the program, it has to be actually limited mm -hmm. and give them more space to enjoy and entertain. So we uh, created different programs to meet this expectation. So they're a little bit like Italians or... Uh, yeah, the Egyptians, because they, they are here in this country, it's mm -hmm. enough. Like if you're going to the museum, one museum a day, that's mm -hmm. enough. So, and then the rest of the day, they would like to do something fun, something entertaining, which is also acceptable because mm -hmm. uh, many of them actually uh, working uh, hard and they need time to relax and uh, chill and so on. So the Egyptians uh, buy the programs where you have lots of activities, where you go to hotels, where beaches, where you go safari, where you go shopping in those countries. So this is the kind of... Uh, program they like. Mm. <coughs> what about the gastronomy and the Egyptian cuisine and that stuff? Is it popular when it comes to programs? Of course, and um, actually we have coming <coughs> up a very important um, um, popular cook show, world cook show coming up to shoot in Egypt. Mm. So the Egyptian cuisine is very rich and very varied. And organic and healthy also. And organic and healthy. Uh, if you're not using too much fat or oil. You're eating mahi. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. But for falafel, uh, but falafel and lentils. Falafel and, and uh, lentil and everything all. Everything. Everything is actually. Even the fruits and vegetables. Exactly. And we have vari variation and also very rich. Um, so um, we have guests who like also to try different Egyptian food and they put in their request that they want to go to a local restaurant and they want to mm. be served local food, so not international cuisine. So they, mm. and one of the very interesting things that when you are, for example, doing the luxurious tours, uh, they would like to try local food and they get mm. a special chef to cook for them koshari. Mahshi, like you said, mm. they do fatir for the breakfast with honey and so on. So they like to try the Egyptian food. And of course, uh, this is something that travel agencies also need to enhance and work on a little bit more. Mm. Of course. Yes. Any initiatives that are uh, taken by the Ministry of uh, Tourism lately, um, having been concerned that they should provide uh, or update the programs to co coincide with the uh, corona and everything? Yes, the Ministry of, uh, of Tourism and uh, <coughs> Antiquities also uh, created lots of virtual tours in the uh, last uh, year. Virtual tours encouraged lots of people to be in connection with Egypt. Uh, Egypt is always mentioned. They also created lots of uh, initiatives for the new museums that has been opened in Egypt last mm -hmm. year. More than three or four museums are being opened in Horgada, in Sharm, in the Delta, and lately the Civilization Museum. So the, all those are encouraging lots of Egyptians and non-Egyptians to uh, travel uh, to Egypt. Mm. Uh, and of course, uh, there are some, I mean, the COVID have, uh, as we earlier said, we have learned lessons and it has uh, proved to be beneficial on one side that it had created the digital tourism. Yes. Digital tourism is also very important. In okay, the exactly. And it's the future. So any programs for digital tourism? Yes, and I tried myself one virtual tour with German guests. Mm. Uh, my personal opinion that uh, such virtual tours are very important mm. for uh, marketing and also very important for the uh, kind of uh, client who cannot do all the activity. A client can be in or Egypt. Or don't have time. Yeah, or don't have time, uh, exactly. The client who is already in Egypt, but not able to uh, do the uh, pyramid tour from inside. He's not able to go inside the pyramid, maybe mm -hmm. of health reasons and, and, or, or any uh, medical issue. Give this client a chance to see the pyramid from inside mm -hmm. through a virtual tour. And that's... Do, do that require a certain specific um, technical uh, yes of course uh, of course everything. lots of technical i'm and not an uh, expert in, uh, yes when uh, i did that uh. Uh, i did it for german guests with uh, one of the travel agencies and we had to sit in the office and the technical support team was beside me because it was really uh, the first time for me to do a digital tour mm. i don't know how to take them from one spot to the other being just on the screen 
So it was even a new experience you for me. You were inside the location? No, no, no. I was in the office at the travel agencies and they have prepared the program or the virtual tour. And you have your voice over. And I voice. have my voice and I can see the guests on the other side through the camera. Mm. It's like a Zoom meeting. Exactly. It's like Zooming mm. and they can ask me questions. And now I have to learn how to move from one spot mm. during the virtual tour, but also on the screen. So it was even difficult for me. That's why I had a technical support guy sitting next to me. Mm. Uh, it went fine, but it's still we are not used to it. And tour guides are not used to also doing uh, virtual tours. We are used to live face-to-face uh, -face tours. Mm. So, but this is actually something that we should not abandon after the pandemic. It should be continued. Of course. Because, because it's the future of our lives. Yeah. But talking about the, 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 the um, I mean, the, the, the inspirational programs like the high definition, uh, the uh, new ideas, uh, the uh, tourist guide is located inside uh, the place um, and uh, giving full explanation himself and the tourist is following up on the other side. I mean, talking about advanced uh, programs like that, did the Ministry of Tourism uh, prepare? No, we are actually uh, doing right now only the virtual tours, and this is the main thing we're working on. Uh, life, life tourism uh, and being live in the location, uh, this is something that will never stop. Even with the technology and the virtual tours, we, I don't, for myself, I don't want to uh, imagine that everything will turn into virtual one day, mm. because at that time, uh, you lose the connection. Uh, you lose part of the connection. So that's why I think they should be parallel. The normal mm. st uh, style of touring. Of course, because there are other ty types of uh, uh, places or uh, programs that wouldn't be fit for t in virtual tourism at all, like gastronomy, for example. Uh. Or going to a, to a restaurant. <laughs> I wouldn't accept it at all. <laughs> you can show the guests the kind of food. <laughs> Well, unfortunately, uh, uh, we ran out of time, but we're very happy to receive you. Thank and you. And on a promise that you would uh, uh, come over uh, once again on w uh, the, to the breakfast show and talk more about uh, the virtual tourism. Inshallah. Especially Thank you that so we're much. still uh, going on with the COVID. Uh, many thanks to you, uh, Ms. Yubna Salema. You are a tourism expert and the tourist guide. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me and happy feast to Our everyone. My pleasure. Happy, happy Byron to you. And we're going to go to a short break and come to continue the breakfast show. So stay with us.